Hey everyone, Diggs here for Lockpickers United, and welcome back to Mentorship Monday. Today we're going to be talking about tension, arguably one of the most important subjects in the hobby, period. And the reason it's so important is that you can't pick without tension. You have to apply tension for things to bind, and if you don't have things bound, you can't find them and pick them. So we're going to start with pin tumbler locks in this video, and in the future we'll carry on to dimples and disc detainers and lever locks and whatnot because there are some pretty significant differences and we want to be able to cover each in detail. So there's a couple of things that you can do to investigate a lock before you bother trying to tension and pick it. And one of those important things that you can do in a pin tumbler lock is count the elements, count the pins. And it's pretty easy to do. All you need is something flat that fits in the keyway and can lift up all the pins simultaneously. And then as you're holding them all up, you drag that tool back out of the lock and as each pin stack falls, you can hear it and count it. And that'll give you a good idea of whether or not your lock has four or five or six or seven pins. And that's incredibly important information because if you're only counting back to six while you're picking and there's a seventh pin stack back there, you will never open that lock. So you have to know what you're up against. Once you know how many pins are in that lock, you can take a hook and a tension wrench, apply a little bit of tension, and then drag that hook slowly from the back of the lock to the front. What you're feeling for is something that's stuck. So as you drag the tip of your hook over the tips of each of those pins, you will find one that is stuck. If you don't find any that are stuck, then that tells you you're not tensioning the lock enough. And if you drag over those pins and every pin feels bound, or the majority of those pins feel bound, that tells you that you're tensioning too much. So it's a range, it's a spectrum here. You're never going to be able to say, this is the perfect tension for me, I will use it on all locks. It's quite the opposite. The lock tells you how much tension you need, and you have to be able to discover that by giving it too much or too little and probing the pins to figure out what they're telling you. So as you're dragging for binders, the goal is to find a, an amount of tension that only gives you one binder. And before you even start picking or moving anything, you can identify that tension. Now, it does shift in certain locks, and it will play tricks on you, uh, because as things get bound up, especially if you have security pins, the amount of required tension can shift. And so you'll have to reestablish yourself in the lock at that point. Side note, if you feel like all of the pins have suddenly gone springy, then that generally means that you've overset a pin and nothing is binding because of it. It's not because your tension is wrong or is too light, though that will cause the same feeling. If you've already been tensioning and you've already set pins or are setting pins and all of them suddenly become springy, you've overset something. And that's, uh, depending on the lock, that's game over, start over. But some locks, you can just ease tension off a little bit and if the springs are good enough, it will reset that pin down to uh, a place where it needs to be picked again. So dialing in tension, it kind of goes like this. You apply tension, you feel with your hook, you drag past the pin tips with the tip of your hook, and if you feel all kinds of things bound, lower your tension. If you feel one thing bound, perfect. And if you feel nothing bound, add tension. And by dialing in back and forth that way until you find just one thing bound, you can locate the correct tension for at least that portion of picking. And generally speaking, on uh, poorly made locks, uh, cheaper padlocks, that sort of thing, once you find that tension, you don't have to shift it very much. That tension can be applied through the whole picking process, and it will be successful because that is the perfect amount of tension for you to be able to move elements without losing the ones that you've already set. What I do when I'm trying to pick a pin after I think I've located the correct tension is I'll put the hook tip on the one pin that's binding, I'll ramp tension up a little bit so that nothing is moving, and I will situate that hook, uh, shift it around, get it to the right depth, get it to the right angle as best I can in the keyway, and try and get the flat 
portion of the tip of my hook, generally a short hook, right on the tip of that pin, uh, somewhere where it feels very sturdy and comfortable. And then at that point, I will apply pressure with the hook and I will relieve pressure off the tension wrench. So I'm giving it a steady force from the bottom and then once the tension is relieved enough, that pin will set exactly where it needs to. Now, if you're tensioning way too much, or if you're picking a lock that requires a lot of tension for you to discover a binder, then this can put you in some trouble. Because if you're, you're giving it steady force from the bottom and you let off tension, then that pin will shoot past the shear line because you've given it too much force and you just didn't know what the right level was. Once you've done that, you generally will overset a pin and, like I said before, either have to restart or you'll have to relieve tension even more and chances are you're going to drop a pin or two. So as you relieve tension, you need to be smooth about it and slow. Just take off a tiny bit of pressure and your hands will get more sensitive as you pick. Uh, you will see with practice, you're much better at uh, feeling and negotiating feedback. You'll be able to tell the difference between a set pin, a pin that just went past a serration, a pin that just went into a spool. It makes the whole process easier. You have to practice. You can't listen to someone talk about this or watch a video and instantly get it. Practice is required here. But what I'm giving you are tips. These are logical steps that you take to figure out what that tension is. Uh, you're going to have to feel it for yourself, and it's going to be different in every lock. And like I tell people constantly, no two locks are the same, even if they're the exact same brand and model. You could have two Master 3s, you could have two Miwa PRs, and there's a pretty solid chance that the tension required in those locks is going to be different. There's almost a guarantee that the binding order will be different. One man's action to pick their version of that lock and your actions to pick your version of that lock generally are not going to line up. That being said, some locks bind up in a specific order uh, between multiple element types. So like, for example, an MT5 Plus for multi-lock, you have outer pins, inner pins, and sliders. And for the most part, they will bind up outer pins, sliders, then inner pins. So it'll give you a general idea of what to shoot for and feel around for. But I've seen MT5 Pluses that bind up randomly in between those sets. So like I said, there's no guarantee. The process is find the correct tension, apply the correct tension, hunt for that binder, and then move that binder until it's set. And then rinse and repeat. Um, you won't necessarily have to find the right tension over and over again. Generally speaking, you can apply the same and you'll be fine. So your two general tension types for a pin tumbler are going to be top of the keyway and bottom of the keyway. Each has their own problem and each is better for certain things. So top of the keyway in general, in my opinion, is better. And the reason for that is it generally keeps your wrench away from the space that you want to pick in. And I feel like it gives you better control with less likelihood of binding on the lock itself. That being said, it does have an issue. If you insert a top of the keyway tension wrench into the lock as far as it will go, uh, you will set that wrench directly against the first pin of the lock. And if you're applying a ton of tension, then it will make the first pin feel bound when it shouldn't be out of order. And it will also make it very hard to move. Uh, so sometimes you'll wind up picking your own tension wrench out of the keyway instead of picking pin one because it's so solid that it feels like the same thing. On the flip side of that coin, bottom of the keyway tension has its own issue, which is getting bound on the lock body. If you put a bottom of the keyway tension wrench into a plug and you don't make sure that both sides of it are actually contacting the plug, it will contact the lock body and then you're going to be bound up on the lock body and you're not picking anything like that because the plug is no longer free to rotate and therefore you are no longer free to tension things properly which means your pins won't bind properly which means you can't pick them because you have to be able to find a binder to be able to move the binder what I mean by binder is whatever element pin slider whatever it is that is currently bound and what I mean by bound is it's stuck it doesn't move the whole process of picking is dependent upon your ability to find the binder. And tension is how you create binders. 
a, a lock in its normal state will have nothing bound up. Everything will be sprung and loose, and that's how it has to be so that the key can enter and move things to the right height. So you have to apply tension to the lock so that pins get bound and you can feel the bound pins and you can move them out of your way and past the shear line. A note on tension wrenches themselves. They have to be close to the right thickness. And the right thickness is whatever the thickness or width of your keyway is. The closer your wrench is to the width of that keyway, the more control you have. And I cannot stress this enough. Control of tension is paramount. If you don't have control of your tension, or it's sloppy, or you're holding the lock in your hand and so you can't provide even tension, you're done. You, I mean, you might be able to get open some easier locks, but if you practice that way and that's how you pick, you won't ever beat high security locks because they're too sensitive. You have to have very precise tension to be able to move those elements without losing the set elements you've already worked through. One more quick tip before I end this video. So if you ever feel like your tension's starting to slip, like your wrench is about to pop out, or maybe it's kicked to the side now and you know that you're not going to be able to finish picking, all you have to do is grab another wrench or a pick or anything that'll fit in the other end of the keyway, put it in there, crank it down, and then reset your original tension wrench. So let's say you've got, uh, you're picking with top of the keyway tension and it starts to slip on you. Throw a bottom of the keyway tensioner in there. Uh, crank it down so you don't lose any of the pins that are already set. And reset your top of the keyway wrench. And then as you ease tension back off of the bottom wrench, take it back up on the top wrench. And you can continue on. This video was definitely not all inclusive. And while we focus in on pin tumblers, we will talk about dimples, disc detainers, and levers in the future. And if there's anything useful that you feel like everybody should know that I missed, please let us know in the comments, and maybe we can uh, focus in on that and include it in a future video. The most notable exception that I skipped, I skipped on purpose, and that's counter-rotation. Now, if you don't know what counter-rotation is, I want you to go back to Mentorship Monday number 8 and watch that. Captain Hook does a great job of explaining what counter-rotation is, and you get to see through a, a front-facing cutaway what a spool pin looks like, how it binds, and what it feels like when you get back out of there. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. I also hope you realize that all of the information in this video was really just me talking. I included a bit of video, but it's not polished and it's not always relevant to what I was speaking on. And that's because I really wanted to focus on what tension is and what it's about rather than trying to show you. It's kind of a moot point trying to show you something that I'm feeling. And please come back tomorrow for Teardown Tuesday. The lock of the week is one of my favorites and I think you'll enjoy it. Happy picking.